The views and opinions of any of the guests of After Hours AM are not necessarily the views and opinions of After Hours AM, its hosts, its staff, or any of its affiliates. Broadcasting live from the After Hours AM studio, Joel Sturgis and Eric Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this edition of After Hours AM. I'm your host, Joel Sturgis. Is anybody else there? (laughs) Yes, you didn't turn my way. Eric Olson (laughs) and (laughs) Dr. Clarissa Cole. Wow, you you didn't hear anything. Cool, I could have said anything. I heard nothing. I could have been like, you know, that Eric, you know, he's he he, he has a rubber butt. And every time he turns around, he goes, putt, 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 you know. So. <laughs> that would have been about the worst you could have said. Well, that's my three-year-old's big thing today. You have a rubber butt. <laughs> you know, you're nuts. You have a rubber butt. Every time you turn around, you go, putt, putt, putt. That, that, and she laughs for like 10 minutes after that. So anyhow, getting back to the serious business of After Hours AM at hand, Better known as the Three Amigos, of course, of true crime. And Erica, I know you got you've got some news to the listeners. I'd like to get to that right off the top, if you wouldn't mind. If you, if you feel like talking about it, I'd love that if you would. Oh sure, it's all therapeutic. I certainly learned that. I, I felt that last week. That's for sure. When we were when when we were discussing it, yeah. Uh, so my dad, who I've been talking about, who was in rather serious decline with the congestive heart failure and then he ended up getting MRSA via a procedure and he just couldn't he couldn't fight it off as tough as he was even though he had just overcome pneumonia only a few weeks before that and he just kept bouncing back and that's what everyone keeps saying god we thought we was he, he be, would bounce back from that but no it was just too much he, his heart was too weak and um all the organs ended up going, just all, you know, kind of all the stuff you would anticipate. And he did pass away on Saturday. It was very sad. It's really hard. I keep having the waves of uh, sorrow that apparently lots of that apparently is the norm. Everyone keeps saying, yep, that's how it goes. You get a wave coming through and then hopefully it's gone pretty quickly. And other than one super major meltdown, I think it was two nights ago that is how it's worked it's just been a quick wave i'm very sad something triggers it and then i'm all right and often it's in the middle of a phone call so i'm I'm talking away then i break down and melt and sound like a blubbering idiot and then i'm fine again it's bizarre so yes the service is tomorrow and uh, we've kind of been gearing up for that as far as what happened uh obviously we did not want that result um that's that's the bad part uh but on the other hand, he was 84. He had an amazing life. We were just commenting amongst ourselves. We've heard it from lots of other people since we put the obituary together. I mean, wow, he did a lot of things. And we figured out he did visit actually more than 100 countries in his wow. life. Wow. He did a lot of things. And he Man. went to every Summer Olympics between L.A. and 84 and London. So, I mean, he was Mr. Olympics. He has his tremendous collection that I'm going to kind of 
curate and try to put together into some sort of exhibit. So there, sure. there are many things that we have to celebrate, and that's what we're focused on. This was a tremendous guy who touched a lot of people's lives, and you know, you always want it to be longer. 84 isn't 94, and it's not 104, but hey, <laughs> it is 84. Yeah. And almost all that time, for other than a very brief period, you know, brief periods really just in the last year of his life, he was he was quite functional. He had an excellent quality of life. He did all kinds of wonderful things. He really helped out with my kids. When my wife and I are super busy and doing our own things, he helped out. Until really very near the end, basically till he couldn't drive anymore, and that was only that was only the last year or so. And even yeah. so, he was he was always there mentally, and um, uh, he was himself. So, and and last uh, I will say about it, so that we're not belaboring it. Um, when when the time came, we we're you know we we're at the absolute ground zero for such things. We were literally in the cardiac ICU of the Cleveland Clinic. That's like the best place in the world he possibly could have been at the time. And when that he wasn't in pain, um, he, he came to, he had been sedated for the breathing tube. They stopped the sedation. They took out the breathing tube. We were all there, everyone but my son, who is in Finland. You've heard about him many times. He couldn't make it. They're coming in October. But other than him, who my dad did Skype with mm -hmm. on Thursday, uh, last Thursday, which was kind of his last really fully – lucid in all their day which was a great day for him um he, he talked to chris he saw the babies the twins and chris's wife in finland so even though chris wasn't physically there uh, he was certainly there in spirit but everyone else all the other grandchildren his other children and um really super close friend the minister showed up um he he did revive he came to he opened his eyes he spoke to us so it was like a it was like a bad lifetime movie as far as clichés goes. He died peacefully surrounded by family and friends. He really only lasted a few minutes after they took out the breathing tube. And of course, again, it was very difficult, but we are focused on the positive because that's what he would have been. He said the last real words that he said to us that Thursday before we left Thursday evening was I remain optimistic, I am calm. Uh, I, I'm ready. So I guess it's about as good as it could have been given the terrible result that we lost my dad. Yeah. And, and, and again, Eric, um, all of us give our condolences and there has been an outpouring from the listeners as well. I want to thank everybody for that. And thank you for keeping Eric and, and his family in your prayers and, and uh, really caring. You know, we, we, we actually have listeners that care and that's great. That, that's the great part about the show is they're invested in us and, and we're invested in them. And, and when something does happen, they really are there to kind of, you know, cheer us on or, or tell us, you know, Hey, too bad, things like that. So we're, we're blessed that way. And, and uh, again, your ma your dad was an amazing person, amazing man. He also raised an amazing son, you Eric. Oh, and, thanks. and uh, <laughs> so he, he touched a lot of lives and uh, is continuing to do so both through you and his grandchildren. So, and now great grand and great great grandchildren. So again, our deepest condolences. But uh, we will Thank move you. on from that because you know, like I you made said, it through that. You so did. You you did. Breaking up once. You did. You you really did. Uh, you know, and, and uh, man, again, deepest condolences, and we all are here for for you, and uh, we will continue to be there for you. So. You know. Thank you. And for those who think it may be a little odd the, uh, that I'm uh, that I'm on this week, it, it's it's important to me. I really did. It's therapeutic. I wanted to kind of convey to everyone what had happened since we yeah. we did talk about what was going on last week. And uh, I agree with Joel. You know, it's it's really nice to have people out there who do listen and who do care. That is a wonderful thing, and I do appreciate it very very much. And we are so committed, and we said this last week too, to really making these shows, these Wednesday and Thursday night shows, the best that they can be. And we're, we're, we've both been distracted. We've all been distracted by a lot of things. And I, I know you guys know how important a job Clarissa has. And, oh, yes. You know, she's got a lot of obligations. I mean, she is the real McCoy working for the uh, state of California penal system and and giving us her time in in what would otherwise be spare time so 
you know, we've all had a lot of stuff going on, but we're absolutely committed to making these shows the best they can be, to promote them as best we can, to, and to really kind of move it to the next level and, and professionalize. So as part of that, I really wanted to be here. I'm, I'm going to do my best to be here tomorrow night as well. It's a little more iffy because we do have the service tomorrow, but it's in the afternoon, so uh, I should uh, be able to make it, and I'll certainly let Joel know in advance about tomorrow night. But I'm very excited about tonight because, man, oh, besides yeah. have co- covering all the amazing true crime news that we typically do, both serious and bizarre and hilarious, uh, we have an amazing guest who has put together a really quite an outstanding documentary that's been on HBO now for the last couple months called Mommy Dead and Dearest. And she is a really fast rising young woman. She's just late 20s yeah. filmmaker who has put this thing together, Erin Lee Carr. So we're very excited to talk to her in the second hour. Well, you know, she also did the documentary, The Cannibal Cop, as well. Exactly. And and, I watched that Carissa one today. has covered that before, and, that and, case. So and it was, absolutely, we want to talk about that as well. Yeah, definitely talk about that. And then tomorrow night, of course. Get your rock and roll ready because we're having the Ghost Wolves on tomorrow night. I'm really Carly, the lead singer from the Ghost Wolves, will be joining us and talking all things paranormal and rock and roll and kind of going in that direction. I look forward to that show as well. So you're not one of my that that first day my new tongue, guys. I tell you, uh, I actually uh, hit my mouth right before showtime. My, Don't hit your mouth. My, you well, I shouldn't say I hit my mouth. My little one headbutt me in the mouth. Oh, and yeah. oh that my hurts. god, that hurts! And I'm, t- I'm, I have a bleeding sore, and I'm trying to talk. And so, excuse me if I stumble a little bit. I'm like, I oh my god, this really hurts. Absolutely relate. Oh gosh, so tell you, excuse so you don't me. Feel bad. To yeah, a headbutt. <laughs> From a toddler. Oh, God. When Billy yes. was 18 months old, she didn't do it on purpose, but we met heads, and her hard little cranium oh, yeah. literally hit, hit me in the forehead, knocked me over, <laughs> and oh, wow. almost, almost, almost knocked me out. I Man. Was, oh, Stars. Oh, I took one right in the mush by by James. He's my one and a half year old. Unbelievable! So your head just did that to me. It was like a freight train. It was like it LeBron really James hurt. driving it, on me. It really it does awesome. hurt, and it's like really you had to pick all times. You know, all times to do this. You pick now when I actually have to go talk for a long period of time. Thanks, kid. Uh, right. I'm gonna remember that later on. I'm gonna remember this. No, but you're right. You're just gonna like pop him in the mouth that, right before well, prom or what? No, Little no. One, he, hard hit. Yeah, <laughs> retribution won't. No, retribution won't happen. He's just he's too cute. He's one, so you know you can't seek rep- retribution on the poor boy. He doesn't know what he's doing. But anyhow, getting back to what I was saying, we got a couple of great shows lined up for everybody. But we're switching gears a little bit now. Uh, I've read headlines. Clarissa's le- read headlines, but the people have spoken. They love you more, Clarissa. We do the headlines. Oh, yeah. So, and I'd like to make this a point that this first hour will, from here on in, be brought to you by the Criminal Code. If you've never gone to thecriminalcode.com, you are missing a lot of things, guys. You can look at bios. You can look at rundowns of all the serial killers. Get the latest news and, and actually follow a lot of what she talks about on this show, on the Criminal Code. So definitely check that out. That is your true crime source right there. Forget everybody else and remember thecriminalcode.com. Thank you, Joel. Yeah. Yes, I, I try to put, I'm taking requests too. If you want, uh, you know, a profile well, of somebody that is not that, yet on the, on the uh, website. That is know. odd that you were to mention that. I had a request actually, uh, not to, you know, throw this right on you, but we had uh, Andrew Phillip, uh, and, and let me pronounce this, Kanana, oh, uh, Kanana, there yes, it is. Versace, yeah. And uh, that was, what, and evidently, there's a 2020 special coming on about oh, this. And they were kind of curious. The listeners were kind of curious. Your take on because they're calling him a serial killer. Was he indeed a serial killer? And do what do you know about him? Now, I would, from what I remember, I think Kanana was a spree killer. 
which uh, is, is is kind of what I remember. And that is more typical of, of guys, uh, well, and women who, who go after a public figure like that, you know, like a Hinkley going after Reagan. Yeah. Um, they might take more than one person out in a short period of time, which, you know, people are saying that, you know, that's the definition of a serious. 